All right, so uh, after playing with this for a little while, I've come to realize there's really not a whole shit ton I can do. I mean, they've got, you know, a certain amount of little step plastic supports on the bottom of the uh, actual palm rest itself, and they're supposed to correspond with points on the magnesium chassis. Like in here, it's solid. It's just the points where the palm rest is supposed to support itself, and there are a lot of spots, like up here near the, uh, the Broadcom chip. It's just, you know, there's there's legs on the actual palm rest itself, but there's nowhere for them to sit in the chassis. So that's why I'm getting so much movement up front. That's where I'm getting my creek from. I threw a couple strips of double-sided tape on top of the card reader here, and I threw one kind of on the corresponding side on the main support there. And, uh, yeah, I kind of... There's this big missing spot in here. I don't know if that's... I don't know if you can see that or not. right in here. I don't know if that's where, you know, an optional chip is supposed to go or something like that, but there's no support there, so you get a ton of deflection on your palm rest in this area. So I put a whole bunch of uh, felt pads, kind of stacked them up there, hopefully. Hopefully that'll help us out. And uh, anyways, yeah, like I don't really know what else I can do. I'm kind of disappointed, to be honest, just by the way the whole thing is put together. It doesn't make a whole ton of sense for a company like, you know, Lenovo. I know they didn't design the ThinkPad, they, but they should at least be carrying on with its legacy of quality. Anyways, that's enough of that. Let's start throwing this back together. makes it hard. I mean, the whole thing is so dependent on these little plastic snaps. It really makes you just wish they would have put one or two more screws in the bottom of it. There are a lot of actual studs on the motherboard itself that are there to support screws, but there are no screws to put in the holes. Which makes things difficult. Especially when you're trying to line it all up again like this. And it just... doesn't want to cooperate. Alright, so I think it's all snapped back into place there. Flip it over and put some screws back in. That's kind of the fun part when you get to try and remember where everything went. Do your best, make sure you don't have anything left over. It should be okay. This is where my issue is right here on this side of the palm rest and you can see there's this big big gap here between the screws. There's one here, one here, and then there's two on this side. So I don't get the creaking on the left like some people do, but I get it right in front of the latch release. And I think if they just installed another screw there, and I know there's a hole to do it, it might have fixed the problem. Unfortunately for whatever reason on this particular model, the 510, they chose not to. Okay, so I've got two screws left. I assume that they go in for the keyboard. So I'll flip this back over again. Install that. I mean, it definitely stiffened up. It's interesting. 
interesting. It definitely stiffened up this area in the corner for sure where I had those two big strips as well as over here. Fortunately, I can almost guarantee I'm still going to have that movement in the front. But what are you going to do? Sure, remember to reconnect the ribbon cable for the track pad and the fingerprint reader. Make sure it's seated completely. Grab the keyboard. I know a lot of people had an issue with these, with them having play in the corners. I haven't dealt with anything like that, but I know if you do have it wiggling back and forth, you can do the same thing I kind of did on the inside. You can put the pads on the magnesium case over the CD-ROM drive. And it seems to fix that, but that's not something I'm going to deal with. This is kind of tricky as well, getting the uh, connector for the keyboard to line back up again. I guess I'm getting good at it. As far as the keyboard goes, you put the top in first, kind of slot it in, drop the bottom down, just kind of put even pressure on it and pull it down into place like that. screws back in. Kind of hear the chassis creaking and groaning as it goes back into place. Hard drive goes back in just as easy as it came out. Slide it in. You feel it connect. Somebody's home upstairs. Just tuck the ribbon cable back in there. Easy, easy, easy. Memory cover snaps back in in the middle. It's supposed to snap back in in the middle. back in, lock that, see ROM bay goes in as easy as it came out, that's locked, and last but not least put in your blank card, just like that, and you should be done. So, overall, I think it's better. I'm not positive, but I think it is. I'm kind of alarmed, actually, by a little bit of pressure I'm seeing on here. So I might pull out that back piece of tape on this side. As I can see, it's kind of dimpled where I screwed it in. Other than that, though, it's still got a bit of play, but... I think that's about as good as it's going to get for this particular machine.